How's it going, American truckers? Got Snapper here. Uh, we're going to talk about right lane changes that way. All right. It's five steps to a right lane change. And if you follow these five steps, you will never have a right lane change accident. I can assure you. Okay. <coughs> right lane change accidents are uh, very common in our industry. And... Uh, it's it's a it's a career ending move, you know. Um, very high likelihood that'll put you out of the industry. But anyway, if you follow these five steps, you'll never have to worry about it. Okay. All right. This I actually learned years ago at Stevens Transport, believe it or not. But uh, it's something that I took from there that I've always kept. And uh, anytime I'm training, I teach the same because it works. It's highly effective, okay? All right, number one, turn your blinker on. Signal your intention. You know, you, you know, as drivers, you turn your blinker on, you look back, three cars dart out from behind you. Never fails, always works that way. All right, so number one, turn your blinker on. Wait a second or two after you turn it on. Then you're gonna check your mirrors. Now, when I check my mirrors, I check them all. And the reason I check the ones on this side as well is because I'm looking to see if anybody's over here with their blinker on behind me coming this way. Because the car is going to move a lot faster than I am. A lot of times a guy will have a right lane change accident and he'll say, man, I never seen the car. Wasn't there. It was over here originally. Darted out around them on the right side. And that's how you end up coming in contact with them. So you check all your mirrors. All right, the next thing you're gonna do is tap your brake. Slow down one or two mile an hour. Here's the reason, especially in the rain or snow, you look in your mirrors and you may not see a car. Maybe they got their lights off. Um, maybe they blend in with the surrounding. You don't notice it. Uh, be surprised, this happens a lot. When you change your speed, you're gonna change the way it looks in your mirror. So all of a sudden that car will appear, you'll see it because the look changed. So always change your speed. All right, and after you tap your brake and you slow down a couple mile an hour and you look again, the next thing you're gonna do is take a direct look. You just grab a hold of that steering wheel and you lean up and look over that corner to make sure there's not something sitting there. Even if you got a mirror up there on the hood, you still want to take a direct look. Make sure there's not a motorcycle sitting there. Whatever. Make sure there's nothing there. I'd rather look and know than take a chance. Alright. The last thing you do is you start, after if everything's clear, you start making your right lane change. You make it smooth. Take your time. And continually check your mirrors while you're making your lane change. You leave your blinker on until your truck and trailer are all the way into that lane. Then you turn your blinker off. I promise you drivers, you follow these five steps, you'll, I can almost guarantee you'll never have an accident. It, it, it's really, it, it takes a lot of it out. Okay. Um, <clears throat> good thing I'm going to talk about, help y'all out, is backing. I'm going to do a video later. We're actually set up outside and uh, demonstrate different backs. I'll do a 90, a 45, blind side, you know, alley dock. You know, that way people can see what I'm talking about. But in this video, I'm just gonna talk about it a little bit. There's a couple different things I do when I pull up. Uh, one thing I do that, that's really important is I get as close to what I'm backing to as possible. I don't want to be out in the middle. I don't want to be way over there. I want to, I want to have it right here. When I'm in the driver's seat and I'm coming up. I want to be as close to whatever I'm backing into as possible. That gives me as much room that way as I need to move and maneuver. All right. Now, when I look that way and I see how much room I got, in my mind, I visually split it into thirds. All right. So, let's say... I got 75 feet. Well, I'm only gonna use 50 feet of it. 
I'm not going to use the other 25 feet. I'm going to tell you why. When I pull up, my hole's here. I always bring my shoulder just past my hole. At that point, I turn out. This is a 45 back. I start turning to the right. When I turn out, I'm only going to use two thirds of that area. So if I got 75 feet, I'm only using 50 foot of it. All right. And here's why. When I start to back in and my tractor is getting back up under the trailer, it leaves me that room up there. You ever see guys when they're backing in and then the trailers across the way or in their way and it's making it hard on them. They can't get underneath the trailer. You ever been in that position where you're like, crap, trailer's in my way or something's in my way. All right. That cures that problem altogether. No matter how small that space is to back in, I only use two thirds of it. What changes when the space is small is my, my 45 turns into more of a 90. I have to crank the wheel a little bit more to turn that trailer up in there. But the amount of space I use is always the same. I don't want to worry about what's over here. I'm still watching it just to be certain, but I don't want to have to worry about it. All right. That'll help you out with that. Also, when I'm backing in, I'm watching my trailer. I want this side as close to whatever object it is as possible. I may only be five or six inches off of it. And I still will get out, walk around and look to make sure I'm clear on that other side. But most of the time, if you're right up next to this side, you're never gonna hit anything over there, but you still wanna check it. Now, once you get straight into the hole, then you can move everything over. I'll pull forward, move it over and back it up in there so that I'm center. Um, <clears throat> one, one mistake a lot of guys make, and I've, I've made it myself when I was new, uh, so don't feel bad if you've ever made this mistake, is the uh, overhang on the trailer, a dry box or a reefer especially. All right, sometimes there's a fire hydrant or a tree or a telephone pole, garbage can, who knows, right there, you know, behind the truck. Well, if it's not in far enough and you back up, you could hit it. And if it's centered over your trailer, you're never gonna see it in your mirrors. So when you pull up on your spot, always look to see what's back there. Make sure you ain't a person walking their dog in the grass right there, a trash can, whatever. Just make sure there's nothing there so you don't, don't hit it. And if there is, take note of it being there, you know, and then when you're backing in, when you get about three quarters, you know, 90% in the hole, get out, walk back there, see how much space you got. Most truck stops put them far enough back, but a lot of these mom and pop places don't, and you will hit it. So keep that in mind. Um, 90 backing is a little bit more complicated. I'm gonna try to explain it the best I can in this video, and you'll understand it whenever I do a visual of how it works. Um, 90 backing, I'm gonna pull straight up. Okay, my hole's here. I'm gonna pull past my hole. Now this is with the tandems all the way to the front. I'm gonna take the back of my trailer, center of the next hole over, okay? If I'm backing in on this side, I turn my wheel all the way to the right and I start backing up. All right, that starts cranking my truck over like that, starts pushing the trailer. I look out the window and I'm watching my tires on the trailer. Okay, if the tires on the trailer, once the tires on the trailer stop turning and they're just spinning, they're no longer, there's no, no more back force on them. At that point, I stop, I crank the wheel all the way to the left and I continue and I start getting back up under that trailer. Now, if your tandems are in different holes, you have to adjust where you start at. Sometimes it's a hole hole past it sometimes it's right there in the middle of the next hole sometimes it's all the way to the back also the turning radius on your truck's going to affect that so it takes a little bit of practice with your truck in order to figure that out 
Okay. Um, in my opinion, if you're doing a 90 back, you can do a 45. Because at some point, your truck and trailer is all the way out. So you had room to do a 45 as well. Why some guys want to do a 90 is beyond me. Um, I do them sometimes as demonstration to students. Um, I have done them kind of showing off, but there's really no need for it. You can do a 45 or you can do a tighter 45, which almost turns into a 90. Um, <clears throat> but the keys to backing, one, take your time. Get out and look. Get out and look often. Make sure your flashers are on. <clears throat> I don't care if another driver is waiting on you. Even if I pull up, you look over and you see a snapper waiting on you. You're in a hurry. Take your time. I'm not rushing you. I'm just going to sit and wait. I might even pop my brakes. I may even get out and help you. But once you let another driver affect what you're doing, you're no longer driving your truck. He or she is. You might as well take the keys, went over there and handed it to them. Because you're no longer driving your truck. They are. So, don't let a driver affect what you do. You do what you need to do. Within reason, okay? You got to be respectful. Sitting in a fuel aisle and taking your 30-minute break is not being respectful. That's different. But, um, when it comes to backing into a spot, a truck stop, and a shipper receiver... Make sure you, you take your time and you do it. That brings me to another point. If you're backing into a shipper receiver, and this happens a lot up in the Northeast where you gotta back out of the highway and there's traffic. If they put their building in a place where you have to back out of the highway, that's on them. I'm gonna go up there and I'm gonna have two of them come out and they're gonna block the highway for me. And if they don't want to, I'm not backing in because if something happens and I have an accident, that's on me. Those guys, it's not on that company and my company is not going to care. It's my fault. So they're going to come out and they're going to block the road for me. If they're not going to block the road for me, I'm going to call the company. Can't do it. It's not safe. There's no company out there that's going to make you do something that's unsafe. Now, <clears throat> that's within reason, too, because if it's not a real busy street, you know, um, or I'm on a dead-end street, it might be a little different. I might give it a shot. But if it's a busy road, no. no. And that does happen. I've done it in Philly. I've had to do it in New York City. I've had to do it in the Bronx. I've had to do it in Brooklyn. Uh, I even had to do it in San Diego one time right downtown by the Naval Base. So... That does happen. You got to take care of yourself. You got to take care of your CDL. Anyway, I hope some of this helps y'all out there. Everybody, remember we're family. We got to stick together. Um, I'm up here in Cheyenne, Wyoming at the moment. I'm getting ready to go help out on this Walmart fleet for a week. I'm doing a restart, washing some clothes, and uh, going to grab a good shower and kick back in their nice recliners in here and watch TV. But anyway, I hope everybody out there is doing great. I hope this helps. If some of you uh, other drivers got ideas, maybe I missed a point somewhere, don't be afraid, man. Hop, hop in the comments and put a comment in there, you know, so it can help some of these other drivers out that are having a hard time. I'm also going to be doing a video on the hazmat test because I have my hazmat. I have my tanker. Um questions and answers and things like that how to get your hazmat also some of the questions and answers that are on the test that i remember are on the test so i got that coming up um of course i got this backing video coming up i got a chaining video coming up which i may do tomorrow as a matter of fact i may work on that tomorrow um so like and subscribe there's plenty of material coming everybody out there stay safe if you want, you can look me up on Instagram, morgan.buckley.336. Shoot me a message, say hi, say what's up. I love hearing from y'all. Uh, you see me around, come say what's up. I love hearing from y'all. But y'all take care, and we'll see you on down the road. Keep trucking.